Hello and welcome back to Scale Me Down. And in this episode, we've got review and some modifications on this Avios Albatross version 2 that I've recently put together for a friend. Remember to like and subscribe to support the channel. Now let's have a look how it went together. All the parts came well packed in individual bags taped to the inside of this generous box. The mouldings felt quite thick, chunky and quite heavy. I started by making this simple stand frame from some scrap foam to stop it wobbling about and prevent hanger rash. Whilst the parts could be put flat, I added some weathering. Starting with the panel lines which are highlighted using a silver grey paint marker. Next I tackled these rather glossy and unrealistic looking dummy wheels. I used a mask that I made from an old cardboard box and the airbrush to spray some charcoal to dull back the tyre before picking out the hub detail with a paintbrush. Most of the stickers were already applied, with just these to go on. This was difficult to do as they're very thin and they tear very easily, although the supplied carrier sheet was a nice touch. To protect the finish I added three coats of this rosin based floor polish, leaving 30 minutes between coats. I added the wingtip floats with the supplied screws so that I could add some foam armour to the bottoms to save some abrasion if he flies off grass. Whilst the bottom of the hull is already fitted with this plastic protector. And speaking of nice touches, the canopy fits snugly over this rebate to keep the water out. Whilst most of the hinges rely on the foam, just note these horns with back plates and ball linkages. Fortunately, the dummy engines we drew and 3D printed for our VQ DC3 Dakota fit this kit perfectly. And after some silver spray paint and a dark acrylic wash to pull out the detail, I fitted them to the firewalls. I'll put a link up here if you want a pair for yourself. This is a before and after shot, I think they look a lot better. Now I could get on with the build proper, starting by fitting the tail surfaces. I used Yuhu Pour for this job as it's more waterproof than CA. The rudder is fitted with proper hinges and it's secured with more glue and some very long screws. I had to fiddle the front one in using a magnetic pickup tool before tightening it up with a very long screwdriver. It was then a simple job to connect up the elevator ball links. To make the wiring easier and neater I mounted the receiver on some velcro beneath the wing centre section. I also disconnected and taped back the positive connection from one of the speed controllers. The wing centre section then bolts to the fuselage with these very long bolts. Whilst the wing tips are retained with smaller bolts into these threaded metal inserts. However, to get these bolts in you need to file this little nipple off the spar joiners and these are designed to stop the joiners from disappearing into one half. The problem is, these are already a terrible fit in the spars, and this leads to a wibbly wobbly fit of the wing tip. This won't do. My solution was to glue the wing panels together into one piece. I used 30 minute epoxy for the spar joiners and Yuhu Pour for the end faces. I also fitted multiplex plugs and sockets for him to make the fitting and removal of the wing a simple one plug affair. At a span of 63 inches this will be a little less convenient although easier to set up at the lakeside. 
Now I could set the control throws, and for this there's a printed quick start sheet, although for more detail you can download a PDF set of instructions from the Hobby King website. Oh dear, the geometry of the aileron connections means that they travel more down than up. No wonder other owners say she needs a lot of rudder to turn. Worse still, the aileron leads are soldered into a Y down a hole in the centre section. I had to cut this apart and solder new plugs to create separate aileron connections to correct this issue. Also, as the water rudder is on a separate channel, I've put it on a mix so I can switch it off for takeoff and landing. The kit is supplied with these lovely handed scale propellers that turn inboard, hence a bit of thread lock to stop them coming undone. The speed controllers are waterproofed and have a reverse thrust function. As well as being quite dirty, the full size sports these underwing stores which I think are droppable marker boys. So I drew him a set for 3D printing, which I did in vase mode with one shell and 0% infill. I then let some magnets into the undersurface of the wing to hold them. If you know what these things are for on the full size, please let me know in the comments section below. And finally, I balance the model at the suggested CG, putting the pack right in the middle of the bay. Also, notice these carbon stiffeners. Here she is, all finished, waiting for her first flight. You can see I had a few issues when we put it together, so it took a bit longer than I was expecting. But I hope he likes it. Now, let's see how it flies. I'm using a 4S 4000 milliamp hour pack, and before putting it in the water, I was sure to carry out a control surface and a range check. The water handling seemed pretty good during the taxi out, and there's plenty of authority from the water rudder. Getting airborne off the water surface was drama free and I climbed up to trim the model, test the stall and check the flaps. The stall provoked quite a bit of wing drop, so we'll keep the speed up then. There was also a slight pitch up with flap deployment which I later mixed out. Still, she was nice to fly and I soon found myself grooving around at low level for some fun splash and go landings. There's definitely something in this model float plane flying whether it's the reflection of the model in the water or watching it slowly settle into the waves on a soft landing or perhaps it's the dappled light reflecting back from the waves glistening on the wet undersides in any case it's quite magical You get at least 8 minutes of relaxed flying with this pack and there's stacks of power on hand. I nearly got carried away there and forgot to try out the reverse thrust. 
that could prove useful. Let's stick another battery in and go again. Keeping the tip floats out of the water during the takeoff run requires a bit of effort and on subsequent flights I left the water rudder mix switched on all the time but with a great deal of exponential set so that there's only a tiny amount of water rudder output across the centre of the stick movement. It's still handy to have it on a separate channel however to be able to trim it but it means that I used all eight of the channels on the receiver that he supplied and you'll need nine channels if you require differential thrust although the instructions do warn of not going too wild with this keeping the mix below 15% I thought that she's lovely to fly but requires rudder in the turns and you rarely need full power I've really enjoyed putting this model together and flying it for my friend and I look forward to seeing him fly it himself. Thanks for watching and soft landings everyone.